The 15th century is one of the most important centuries in all of our history. It is the time when Constantinople fell to the Turks and most of Europe was going through a transition both militarily as well as politically with the great houses of Europe ruling various lands and countries such as the Valois in France, the Habsburgs in Austria and other parts of Germany and most important of all the House of Trastamara which ruled over most of Iberia having the nations of Castile, Aragon and Navarra as its own backyard essentially and with strong ties over the Portuguese lands. Because of that, E4 depicts Castile as one of the strongest nations in the game at the very start with a massive army, a massive fleet and a huge expansion path. But not only that, you also have scripted events that will guarantee your personal union over Aragon and other parts of Iberia and with a mission tree that guarantees the other parts of Iberia will also be under your control. You also will have access to the New World should you choose to go colonial and it is extremely easy to just expand into Europe ridiculously fast. The 15th century also is the time when the Reconquista was finalized in 1492, a process that took over 700 years from 722 to 1492. The Reconquista pushed out the Muslim invaders from Iberia and ensured that Catholic kingdoms will be the ones that rule over these lands. Obviously the very first thing we'll be doing is we'll be giving out the plus one mana privileges for all three of our estates as well as the advisor cost reduction privileges for all three of the estates again. It does increase the cost of stabbing up so keep that in mind it's going to make it 30 admin points more expensive so if you want you can also hold out until you get one stability before you give out these privileges. I like to give them out from the beginning just in case I forget and also it makes my advisors cheaper and I will be getting advisors from day one so it's kind of worth the cost. We're also going to give out the supremacy over the crown for the uh, nobility, summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits you and don't forget to also seize crownlands right after that. That means we start with 0.20 autonomy which from the recent patch is way better than before. It means we do not need to develop our country anymore from the start and you cannot sell crownlands anymore unless you have 10% of crownland. So what we're going to do to get the money at the start, we're going to be giving out the indebted to the burgers loans, which is five loans at 1% interest. So that means we only pay off 0.58 interest, which is close to nothing. And it allows us to get our advisors. Trade efficiency or diplo reputation are great. Discipline or morale of armies, but make sure they are level one. You don't want to pay too much for your advisors at the start and production efficiency or unrest reduction are great as well. Now you do start with a 0-0 leader Enrique the Trastamara who is also infertile. Despite Enrique being a 0, 0, 0 in our game and in the history books Enrique is not seen as a great king because during his reign Castile saw a lot of transfer of power from the monarchy itself meaning the kings to the nobility thus weakening the royal household. There's also a lot of rumors about Enrique after his death by the person who benefited the most from these rumors rumors Isabella the next monarch of Castile. During the Castilian Civil War Isabella fought Joanna. Joanna was the daughter of Enrique and in order to justify her claim to the throne Isabella said that Joanna is a bastard that she is not the daughter of Enrique and that he was impotent. So that right there is just political intrigue that leaked its way into the history books and that's why in a thousand years from now you're gonna read about how Biden was the greatest leader of the free world when he was not sleeping that is. So now obviously in our game we're gonna disinherit Enrique from the start. We do not want a 0, 0, 0 as our heir. Anything is literally better. And after we've disinherited him we're gonna give out the prestige privilege patronage of the arts. Make sure you give this after you disinherit because otherwise instead of getting 25 prestige to offset the debuff that you start with from disinheriting you only get 15 so you need to follow this order. Rival wise we're gonna rival Morocco, Portugal as well as England Take note, a lot of the times Portugal and Aragon are going to be willing to ally you. Portugal's even a historical friend, but we don't really want friends, do we? We want a land. And Portugal's got some juicy land that we're going to be interested in. Regardless, you can get an alliance with the Aragon if you uh, have that option. If they rivaled you, it's also a-okay. Whether they rival you or they ally you, their 
there's still gonna be a scripted event that will trigger which will give you the crown of aragon as a junior member we also start with 10 percent professionalism but we will need to recruit mercenaries at the start so remember that every time you recruit mercenary companies you actually lose professionalism so in order to prevent the loss of this professionalism or to prevent it going to waste we're gonna be slackening recruitment if you really want to min max this you can also set the edict for increased enlistment all of your provinces and then after you can slack in recruitment it's going to give you 25 percent more manpower however it is going to cost you a lot more for the uh, state maintenance three times more expensive but you can always change it after one year i'm not a massive min maxer so i'm not going to do it myself but if you want to min max that's the way to do it we're also going to be recruiting four light ships in the south provinces as well as we'll be recruiting three regular infantry as well as the free company which brings us 6,000 more troopers we're also going to start getting a spy network on navara if we're lucky we're going to get a claim and annex navara take note it is very very possible that navara is going to ally aragon or that they're going to become a junior member under aragon because at the start the leader of navara john the second of trastamara is the heir of aragon so once the king of aragon dies they automatically get a pu over navara and it's really a matter of time he can die in a year he can die in 10 years it's completely rng so we're either gonna attack them and kill them off or if they ally aragon instead of attacking them we're also gonna ally them and we're gonna diplomatically vassalize them it's quite easy to diplo vassalize we just need to get the relations and the alliance we need to do this because our mission requires us to subjugate navara which is gonna give way to getting the personal union over portugal and other missions to come afterwards we also want to kill off the rest of granada here but we have a truce with them until 1448 so these four years until that truce is over we're gonna use to either fight the portuguese or another nation that i'll be mentioning in a few moments you probably know who i'm talking about though don't you you can also set your light ships to protect trade in sevilla and the rest of the fleet you can set them to hunt pirates in sevilla which will prevent the uh pirate nations from raiding your coastlines in that trade note take note it is very likely that aragon is going to cancel the alliance and it's going to try and enforce a personal union over you if you have no heir and in order to avoid this all you need to do is not get a royal marriage with aragon even if they want one do not get it because by not getting this royal marriage it doesn't change their attitude to domineering since they cannot get their claim on the throne enforced we got our first mission done here so we got our claims on uh, the andalusian parts but we still have to wait for three years before we can actually declare that war and i like the fact that i said build three light ships but i built three galleys oh god <laughs> um i guess we have some more ships for the navy now even though we don't need these boys we need light ships i also have to say it never ever take the estate statutory it's horrible and you don't need it we got an alliance we got 190 relations so we can diplo vassalize navara now which means we can do our next mission that offers a pu or portugal now take note before you do this pu i strongly recommend that you wait until the portuguese get their exploration ideas unlocked because if you get a pu over a nation they will not get exploration ideas if they are a junior partner we also want to attack portugal before we get that pu so we get two provinces i'm talking about lisbon and porto because these two provinces together have around 60 trade power so that means we would get close to 90 percent of the trade power in the sevilla trade node whilst still having the portuguese pu that is also why we're going to be attacking them right now a lot of the times the english will not join if they're doing badly in the war with the french so you can just wait for a little bit longer and eventually they will not join personally i do not care whenever you see the portuguese troops having movement locked like they have right now it means that they have to get to the next province and because of that we're going to catch up with them and holy snaps they actually have more maneuver in their general they got a three maneuver general so we cannot catch up to them i was all like yeah bro i'll show you how to catch up to the portugos yo and the portuguese general be like no no you're not ludi okay let's try that again shall we they got movement locked they have to go to the province of braganza and we finally caught up with them as well in this province it's also very important to note the fact that you have a gold mine in la mancha and you want to bring this up to 10 production which 
essentially is going to give you 6.66 ducats from this one province alone. And another thing you should note is the fact that you have a special holy order available only for Iberian culture group nations that gives you some unique modifiers here for every single province in these states. Also, it gives you either one military production or tax development in every province, and it only costs 50 mana. So, for example, I can establish this order in this province, and I got five military map points, one in each province, and it only cost me 50 mana. Take note, don't use all of them from the start. You also want to get military tech four. So, do like half and then do the other half after you got military tech four, okay? We're also going to declare our war against Granada because the the truce is over. We can cobaladrate Tunis since they're not allied to anybody else. Be careful though, if you have troops sieging down Ceuta, it might happen that Tunis is going to wipe them out, so you got to keep an eye on that and retreat these units whenever you need to. Booyah Shakalo, we actually stack viped everybody here, so let's go and siege everything now. Apparently, the Tunisian army is literally just sitting in this one province and not even getting close to us. I mean, what is up with these names? Fezan, as in pheasant, Jared, as in Jared. Come on, are these even real? names. Hey, we got the last jousting tournament, which means we got some extra morale of armies now and army tradition gain. Okay, I figure out why these guys are not attacking me. They didn't have military access through Morocco because they're rival to each other. But I landed my troops here and I'm going to bring the rest of the army to take a little bit of a chunk out of the Tunisian lands. And apparently, we are truly breast, breast, breast. We are true. Yes, we are truly breast, guys. <laughs> English is hard, okay? Don't judge me. If the English go to war with the French, what's going to Gonna happen eventually is they're gonna get wary of all the war we have and there you go we can white piece them which also means that we now can piece out the portuguese we wouldn't be able to take all the stuff that we want to take unless we piece out the english so just be patient you might have to fight them also on your mainland if they land over here and if they didn't go to war with the french but you should still have more troops and better troops than them you should take these four provinces exactly this is the least amount of aggressive expansion only portugal and the coalition take whatever money you can but most importantly get the humiliate rival outcome because after you get humiliation from the portuguese you got one more of your age objectives fulfilled and it means that we're gonna get our bonuses faster than we would otherwise you can also concentrate the lands that you took from portugal before you core them up it's gonna make it a little bit cheaper than it would be otherwise and remember that you have a 15 years truce with the portuguese now so you want to get this mission that offers you the pu over them around the time that your truce finishes with Portugal. Die, yes, come back to Nijons. Wow, we got two zeros in a row for real. We ended that with a nine dice roll, so that's a win in my books, boyos. Damn, boy, this took me 500 days to take for real, Ski. Let's kill off the Tunosians over here, and let's kill the ones that are baited to go into the fort. <laughs> so we're fighting this defensively now, because it's my fort now, Tunis. It's my fort. Get out of here. All right, let's also take their capital now so we get our peace deal done oh wow tunis what a great spot to hide in you know it's gonna be a shame if somebody blocks your exit from this uh, harbor and has naval dominance which means you're gonna get stack wiped once they attack you this is why i like you for it appeals to the male fantasy of stack wiping tunisians in the province of jerba you got jerbated boys jerbated avec la tunis is out that means we can do the peace deal and we're gonna take all the tripoli side here we're taking Tripoli for the simple fact that I want a little bit of an opening to the Mediterranean from the middle of the Mediterranean. Plus, I want to have an opening to these small and significant countries here because I'm their bestest, bestest friend. I'm also going to delete the fort in Nigeria because it's useless. And of course, when it comes to Granada, I am going to be going for the full annexation. Um, nobody cares about this, actually. It's literally just Granada and Tunis and a coalition. Considering that Tunis already has a truce with me, they cannot join a coalition. We can also get some new rivals. I'm gonna rival the Ottomans for strategic anti-Ottoman reasons. Whenever you get the event for the Torquemada, I recommend you go for the first option that essentially converts all the Granadan provinces to Catholic, so you don't need to stress about it. And you can even do your further up mission, which is convert Iberia. Also guys, if you're interested in the save game, it is available for all my patrons and channel members. Oh dude, are you kidding me? I really wanted Jared to be in this war, so I don't need to have to make claims on Jared. 
Jared too. But it looks like they're not joining, so I have to make claims separately for Jared. Very, very frustrating. Hold up. What? <laughs> we have Juan II, the Tunisian. Okay, this is uh, interesting. And he's a 543, so I'm actually going to go for him. Our heir is a Catholic Tunisian. I have no clue how this happened, but this guy definitely needs his own backstory. I'm not canceling the course because I'm actually going to be using their cores to feed him back. So I'm going to be going to war with Morocco. But until that point, I just noticed something really juicy, guys. Can you spot it over here for me? That's correct. Byzantium did not get fully annexed by uh, the Ottomans. Now, the chances of this happening are slim. Maybe 20% chance that they're not going to fully annex them. But if it does happen and you have a decent position, I highly recommend that you attack them. Oh, and look at that. Valachia also is a two province miner. So I'm going to co belligerate Valachia in that situation. Let's go with this war. It's going to cost me a little bit of stability, but not a massive deal. Because we also have two vassals. We can give out the strong duchies privilege now that offers an extra two diplo relation slots and lowers the liberty desire for our subjects. We can also change the spy network to improve relations with Lemchen. It can happen that the Ottomans are not going to give you military access. And right now they're not giving me military access, so I cannot reach Valachia. But I got military access from Hungary and I can just land my troops in Croatia and march them over to Valachia from there. Considering our shortage of manpower, I've also used my sailors to recruit some marines. As Castile, you can recruit from the very beginning a large amount of marines, so make use of them. Time to get our little Romanian vassal here and force religion on them as well so they're Catholic. Follow the true faith, you infidel scum. Exactly the same situation with Byzantium. Vassalize, force religion, take as much money as you can also. It is going to cause a little bit of a coalition, but take note that the way aggressive expansion works in EU4... <sighs> okay, sorry about that. Um... Just had a small earthquake i live in japan and i completely forgot what i was talking about uh, i'm assuming i was talking about aggressive expansion so the way that aggressive expansion works in eu4 is you get more aggressive expansion depending on what religion the nation that you're taking stuff from or vassalizing is as well as what culture they are and what culture group they're a part of so if you really know how to manage this and i have a video exactly talking about this you'll find the link below by the way for this well then you never need to worry about aggressive expansion it's all about about managing it properly more than anything else like as you can see here I'm on the limit with everybody but no one's joining in a coalition except Morocco but guess what they're my next target don't forget to also lower the autonomy in all of your provinces autonomy builds up monthly if you don't have at least 20% crownlands and you will not have at the start of the game so until you get that wait until you get around 18 to 20% crownlands in your provinces and then just lower it everywhere and now we have 20% crownlands so we're we're not getting any more autonomy debuff. Make sure you use the right C beam whenever you attack Morocco, and if you have Clemchen as a vassal, it is a time for the reconquest, yes. Oh boy, it's time for the Devil's Vault, you say. Thank you very much, Popio. I love you also. I love you very much. We've got a thousand ducats, so I'm gonna use this to invest in the monument of Alhambra because once we reach level three for this monument, we get plus five admin efficiency as well as diplo rep and liberty desire and subjects for so it's actually one of the best monuments of the game and also look at this guys we're getting 20 ducats in 1462 and you know why that is that is because i took the two provinces from uh portugal and i'm getting 84 percent of the trade so i'm essentially getting 11 ducats from trade alone 6.6 .6 from gold as i was saying before from the province of la mancha and the rest from taxes and production and this only scales up we've got the relations and we're going to start integrating our vassal navarra it's only going to take a few months to integrate them. And the reason I'm able to integrate them whilst I'm at war is because I enabled scootage on this nation before starting the war. Since I knew that I would not need them in the war and that I was going to integrate them. What we're taking from Morocco in the first war is the three provinces in the north. As well as the province of Tafilalt and as much money as we can take. Plus we're giving back the course to our vassal. Coalition wise it is really just Tunis and uh, Morocco. So literally nobody. We're taking Tafilalt because this is a gold 
gold mine so we get another 6.66 gold from this and uh by three provinces i actually meant four provinces nice catch over there plus now we can also embrace la renaissance and now it's time to just chill for a while because we're super far behind with our technologies and we have done as much expansion as we need to we also can get an alliance with austria now apparently that's gonna be of help because we're gonna eventually attack the french and i believe they're rivals yes they are rivals boom another one stability my leader hasn't died even though i made him a general so i'm just gonna abdicate so i can get my ziad in charge ziad is the real cheese man ziad's a chad here look at this 543 good produced modifier as well what else can we ask from ziad hot damn we got a new heir as well let's call him enrique let's go back to the traditional details over here uh we got a looming disaster the castilian civil war right okay that was bound to happen gonna recruit a few extra units in the south here because we're gonna send them off to africa since we got some rebels there and we can do our mission reclaim andalusia because we already converted all the provinces here to um catholic from the other event we don't need to worry about this we're just gonna go for the one stability of course and we also can do convert iberia and we can also declare the war in one month on uh, portugal oh look at that portugal sending their units on the sea so uh let's see 28th let's go ahead and kill their fleet this way we don't need to fight their armies and we kill both their armies and their fleet with one stone or they just landed here and they cucked me okay that also can happen let's try and catch up to them arrivederci portugolus isabella holy snaps my lady 563 oh my god yes please I mean, why are we even having the Castilian Civil War? Historically, it was a war between Isabella and Joanna because Joanna was not giving her hope. Give me hope. Joanna wanna hop, Joanna give me hop. Okay, I'll stop. Ah, amazing, the Castilian Civil War. Shall we support Isabel or not Isabel? Let's go with Isabel, cause she's got great mana stats. Britonia, Britonia. Freaking hell, got a six and I got a zero? Oh, come on, man, that's not even fair. Another zero and another zero. Oh, that was really close. That was actually really, really close. Let me uh, bring my boys back home so I can uh, not die next engagement. Avec le end of the Castilian civil Schwekerle. That means we can uh, attack uh, Tunis now because the truce is over. Let's go with the Tunisian war. Let's crush him. I need a diplomat. Where, where am I diplomat at? Attack of the Kafsa. Oh, cannot cobelligerate Fezan because they're allied to uh, Mamluks. That's fair. We're just gonna take him with a little bit of extra aggressive expansion. It's like a little bit of extra salt when you think about it. And I forgot I'm at war with Portugal. <laughs> I literally forgot him in War of Portugal. Can I actually piece him out? Because it's been a few years. I can piece them out. Okay, it, everything is fine. 103, 76. There you go, boys. There you go. 79 ducats. A juicy union over Portugal. And uh, not even a single nation in a potential coalition. This is amazing. Plus, they already have exploration ideas picked up. So that means that they're going to explore and colonize the new world for us. Can I get an amen for the Tunisian army? Actually, it's not amen in Islam, is it? Um, what do you say in Islam? I actually don't know. Salam alaikum? Or is that just for hello? Oh no! The people of Granada have rebelled against me. Oh, they lied to me. I thought that they're 100% on board Christian. But the reality is, they were LARPing Christianity only. I feel so betrayed. The betrayal is insanely huge. You know, I have this saying. Countries cannot join in a coalition if they don't exist. And in this case, the only country that could join in a coalition against us is is Mazab, so I'm gonna attack him right now. And because they're guaranteed by Tunis, it means we have a shorter truce with the Tunisians, since I'm just gonna white piece them quickly and attack him again in five years. Actually, you know what? I don't feel like waiting for 15 years. 22 aggressive expansion is not really that much, so I'm just gonna take him out now. We only have 91.2 overextension, not even that much, when you really think about it. Every time I look at the province of Salamanca, I'm thinking of Tuco Salamanca from Breaking Bad. <laughs> Loco jefe. No, but really, Tuco was actually crazy. Wait, what? Austria just attacked Bohemia with the Holy Roman Intervention, CB. That means that they demanded unlawful territory. Bohemia said no, and Austria just went, I'm gonna make you give it back. Hey, 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 boys, we got the Iberian Wedding, which historically is the moment when the Crown of Castile and the Crown of Aragon became basically Spain through the royal marriage of Ferdinand and Isabella. Let's get our union over Aragon. This also means that we can get a union over 
over Naples now with the restoration of Union against Naples. We just have to fight the French over it. I also want to fight the uh, Ottomans first before I do the uh, Neapolitan War. And I am aware that I went a little bit more in detail with this video today because I want to make this the first of four parts where we go from 1444 to 1600 with Castile since it is a very easy nation to play and it's very easy to follow with this nation. If we get 10,000 likes, I'll do the second part where we show the Ottoman War, Naples Union, and conquering the south of France. Also, check out this awesome video up next and I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.